Pisces, how are you? My name is Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. So I've done your weekly reading with the Sacred Forest Oracle and the Mystical Shaman mixed together. At the top and the bottom of the deck, I'm seeing the spiral and I'm also seeing growth. This toadstool card. It feels to me, Pisces, like you are coming out of a spiral. You are probably someone, and I say this as a representative of the Pisces community, Pisces tend to spiral a lot, but they're very buoyant, right? That mutable water energy. And so they always kind of bounce back up. And it feels like it's almost a pattern or a cycle that you've been in where you get sort of knocked down and, you know, tub thumping. You get knocked down, but you get up again because they're never going to keep you down. There's something about this cycle. There's something about this spiral, though. When you climb out of it this time, you're doing it in a different way and you're moving forward from it in a different way than you normally have. And it does feel like you're receiving a lot of assistance in doing that, particularly from what I'm seeing from your ancestors. Oftentimes in the collective energy or even in the readings I do, I'll notice that certain spiritual forces kind of take center stage. Sometimes it's deities, different pantheons, sometimes it's the spirit guides or the angels or whatever it may be. But for me, in my house, it really feels like the ancestors seem to be taking center stage. And I think it's been a long time coming. This was a big theme that came up in Aquarius's reading yesterday that I did. I always say you should watch readings by the titles, by the timestamps, more so by the zodiac sign. But if you are going by the zodiac sign, I always think you should watch your neighbor. So maybe there's something in yesterday's Aquarius reading that might be in there for you too. But it does feel like your ancestors are coming through this week to sort of help you through this process. Because we're starting off with this dragon power card. Now, here you are in this darkness. And, you know, sometimes this card comes through and it's really occulty and there's a lot of this magic but today it doesn't come through that way it actually comes through as sort of quite dark and depressing this feels like you kind of at the bottom of the spiral with this ball of light it feels like there's something in your mind that you know that when you get knocked down you end up finding like a gemstone deep deep down in the shadow and I'm a big big proponent of shadow empowerment and shadow work and like the shadow is your friend and so oftentimes you can mine for gold deep down in the darkness and I think that's what you're used to doing so you're kind of in this dark place feeling maybe even a little bit exhausted or fatigued sort of looking around for more power more gemstones right um, because that's where you've always gotten it from that's sort of been the source of your power for a very long time there's this dragon in the car too and it does feel like there's sort of this energy hanging over you that usually comes through is trying to protect or guard you. But today it comes through more like it is trying to prevent you from leaving the darkness or it's trying to prevent you from leaving the shadow. Something about this dragon that feels very contractual or obligatory. Pisces, you can't leave the shadow until you've done this thing. Pisces, like you can't leave this place until you finished up what you came to do. Like there's very, it's kind of like finger wagging type of energy that I'm pulling off of it today. But the wolf spirit comes up next. It says family. This is this ancestral energy that's coming in. Now, it does feel like it's outside of this energy. It's not occupying the space with you and the dragon deep in the depths, but it is very much aware of you. It is hanging right overhead, sort of monitoring this entire process. And what's coming through today is this passage card. Does it say standing stones? It feels like they're coming through with a question for you. And they ask, Pisces, is this true? Is it true that your source of power derives from the darkness? Is it true that this is the only way to empower yourself? Pisces, is it true that you have to finish this process? You have to stay in the shadow or in the darkness in these depths at the bottom of the spiral for x amount of time where's the egg timer like who who told you that pisces is that really true because we always think of truth as being this absolute thing but your truth is flexible your truth is always subject to change so they're just sort of questioning you and asking you if that is absolutely true if you are really contractually obligated to this or is there another passage that you would like to take because if so Pisces we would kind of like to show you the way when I looked at this card I ran through your whole spread and I didn't notice it and right before I turned on the camera 
up in, in the clouds here, it actually looks like there's a little face. Do you see it? There's a little nose, eyes, little jawline. And from my perspective, it actually looks a little bit like a dog face or a wolf face. It's like Pisces, we're right here with you. We can show you another passage if you're so inclined. When I pulled this card too, it reminds me of a card from the Shaman's Dream Oracle called the Further Gate. And so through this passage they're also saying that like there's farther for you to go like there's something bigger there's something more to be obtained that cannot be accessed while you are in this spiral or while you were in this shadow and maybe it is time to outgrow that cycle or maybe it is time to outgrow the part of you that so readily believes whatever this dragon tells you again it's the you have to or you should or you ought to it's this kind of I'm hearing like what gives this dragon the authority what gives this dragon the authority to tell you what you do and do not have to do i like your ancestors they're a little bit feisty and i i appreciate that out of you know lineage readings now moving or considering moving through this new passageway you have raven spirit you have truth and you have the giveaway coming up next and so it seems as if you are being asked or encouraged to give away a truth that is no longer true for you. Maybe at one point, your primary source of power, it did come from the darkness. It did come from the shadow. It did come from tub thumping and bootstrapping, right? But maybe it's not anymore. Are you willing to give that up? When I look at this card, it feels like your dark truth. Are you willing to give up your dark truth, Pisces? In order to make room for the farther gate, in order to make room for something else, another way. There's a million roads to Graceland, right? You might be inclined because Herald of Change, the horseman, comes up next. And it's almost like this, see all this light here? It's kind of like this stark realization of, I didn't even realize that I didn't have to go into the shadow to do this. I didn't realize that this wasn't my only source of power or of advancement like I didn't know that because again it's cyclical it's the spiral it's like you've done it so many times you're like eventually I will make it through this course or this timeline enough times that I won't have to come back here but again there's something about the obligatory nature of this that feels a little bit like every time I get out they just drag me right back in right and so this horse brings through such an energy of freedom I know there's no stall or stable next to him, but with his hooves up in the air, it almost feels like busting open the gate or like busting open the stable and like really like having this huge expansion of your energy. And so much of it, it comes from your mental space of like, I didn't even realize that I didn't have to do that. I didn't realize that I could just say no. I could just do something else. Now, Moonlight Enchantment, very romantic, comes up next. It says magic. The most interesting thing in this card for me, though, is that there's a wolf in here. And it's coming out right underneath this family card. And so there seems to be something here about the fact that I said that they were outside of this energy, right? That they needed your consent. And this is an important thing when it comes to working with spirits of any kind. Is that you are sovereign and you have autonomy. And um, you have free will. And so there is a certain amount of informed consent. That certain spirits, even your ancestors, require. In order to like really deeply come into your space. And start vacuuming it up. Or shifting things around. So it feels like an important aspect of you giving away this dark truth. To make room to receive a new truth about yourself in your life. You doing that has a allowed them the space or the permission the consent to actually come in to this dark place where you are and kind of start breaking up the energy you know when we talk about cleansing or clearing people like to use smoke but you can also use sound clearing um you know how you can have a uh, Tibetan singing bowls or you can have chimes or tuning forks or sometimes if I don't have any of my spiritual tools and I want to clean a space I'll just start screaming in it take a pot take a pan um it's the frequency of sound it shifts the energy in an environment and so when you give away this dark truth when you all of a sudden have this kind of 
oh my god, Eureka, I'm free of that notion that I had in my head for so long. It gives them the space to come in to that dark place and start breaking up the energy. It almost feels like Pac-Man, like rum, 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 just kind of like moving through your environment. And then you come out with thickets of thorns, uncertainty. And so it feels like they come in and they do that. You kind of finally start to get back up. You slowly start to arise. And now the environment around you is shifted. It's not as dark as it was. It's actually quite light and brilliant. You can actually see a lot better of like kind of what's hiding around the corner and the things that are making up this environment. The card does say uncertainty though. So there is an aspect here. You have courage coming up next. There is an aspect of here of nervousness or of uncertainty because like who are you without your dark truth or you're not used to navigating life or navigating this situation or this place trying to operate through a different source of power or through a different sense of personal truth. So that's just where the feels like the word green is coming up. It's almost like you've kind of mastered this energy, but in terms of operating like more in the light, right? Um, in that aspect, you feel a little bit green. You feel a little bit like a page. So you're not quite sure how you're going to navigate it, even though you can see a lot better. But courage, this Aspen spirit is coming up next. And so there is sort of this aspect of bravery to kind of also stick to your word that you are going to find other sources of power, that you are going to be able to navigate in the light, that you can not just survive, but thrive and really navigate through a different environment. It's almost like you are much more confident in yourself when things are dark or bad or chaotic than you are when things are clear or peaceful or, you know, manageable. I, I definitely resonate with that on a personal level. So it does take a little bit of bravery for you to do that, but that's okay. You can't be brave unless you're scared. What comes out in this courageous card too is sort of this house over here. This gives me this idea of like stability, like having roots in a way. And so there's something here about like sometimes you have to do something that's kind of scary or dangerous. So that way you can actually put yourself in a position where you are much more safe and stable. And sometimes that scary or dangerous thing is just to turn the lights on. Again, to not pull your source of empowerment or feel obligated to some kind of darkness or a, a certain path or, or something that again, maybe isn't doing for you what you had hoped that it would. Now in this, but the cool thing is too, is like with these lights on, you're actually able to see sort of like the end goal a lot clearer. Like it actually, where it felt so far away, it actually begins to feel like much more obtainable to you. And maybe it's because you're taking this passage. Maybe it's actually a shortcut in a way. Maybe you've earned yourself a shortcut. You can actually see this a lot better. The moon and lightning come up next. So this is a really kind of beautiful process that we have unfolding now. Like really shout out to the ancestors for bringing in these new perspectives for us. With these moon cycles that we have here, if you notice, there's all of these lines. And these feel like timelines. So it feels like as you're doing this, kind of like lightning, right? It's inspiration. It's wisdom. It's this burst of energy from the heavens that sort of rains down on us and hits in a, a very specific spot, perhaps this spot. And it feels like when that happens, you were originally on a certain cycle, right? You were consistently on a certain spiral, but it feels like it jumps, like you're jumping to a new lunar phase or you're jumping into a new timeline all of a sudden. This lightning is like this big activation. It's kind of those moments where you become very awake and like very aware of your surroundings and feel very much in your body. And you're like, whoa, I'm alive. Like coming off of autopilot, right? Does that make sense? This is what it feels like for me. For those of you that have menstrual cycles, I also get the impression that like your cycle may change. You may move to like a pink or a moon or, or a pink or a purple moon cycle. It feels like that may shift. If that applies to you, it feels like that will be confirmation. If you find your own personal moon cycle changing as well, your body aligning and syncing with this new energy that's coming in. But it definitely feels like you're hopping off like a record. It's like you're hopping off one circle and you're hopping onto another. And when that happens, you arise as this Pachamama and this air spirit knowledge. This Pachamama energy is so powerful today. It's so powerful. It's like coming from being stuck underground 
to like coming up to middle earth and the funny thing this is the craziest thing is that in this underground place it's like your energy feels so small and it feels so tired and like i have to go down here because like this is where my gemstones are like this is where my empowerment comes from but always feeling like so tiny in it but the second that like you get up into middle earth it becomes very apparent how big you are and how powerful you are and as a matter of fact like you didn't need to find any more power um down below because you have more than enough to spare exactly where you are i do feel almost like a sense of injustice coming off of this pachamama card it's almost like i have been hoodwinked like i have been fooled like i cannot believe i let myself do that there is a sense of there's a little bit of there's a little bit of this going on here in this card today right but you feel really powerful you feel very very much in control and it seems like very quickly you master the uncertainty of the thicket of thorns it's like once you just needed like a dress rehearsal here just kind of get your courage up and then once you do it this lightning hits and it kind of like it locks it in and so you come forward as this potch mama and it almost feels like you have this fierce focus it's almost like being in a very like hyper alert trance it's like all of your sets like your hair stands up on your arms like all of your senses are really heightened all of a sudden because they're not being muffled underground and then with this knowledge card do you see these three little golden orbs in front of her today they come through almost like droplets of honey or like little pockets of pollen because you have the hummingbird spirit coming up next and it almost feels like these are little pockets of pollen or nectar and then this hummingbird is going straight for the flower. So the way that this message comes through for me today is when you come back to Middle Earth, when this lightning strikes, this energy gets locked in and you come forward as this really powerful Pachamama energy. Because your senses are so heightened, it's like you immediately know where the honey is. You immediately know where like opportunity or prosperity is. There's something here about like, being in the right place at the right time but oftentimes we don't know when and where that is but as you arise into this energy it's like you gain this knowledge whether it's just through your own internal brilliance or whether your channels are clearing up and getting stronger and so it's being downloaded to you it's almost like i know where the fertility is like i know where the prosperity is i know where the nectar is i know where the joy is gonna be i know the right place and it's like you're you know it early enough on that you can very strategically and intentionally be there at the right time it doesn't become a thing of with like fate or chance it's intellect it's skill it's intuition oh i know where the bees will be i'm gonna go there now by the time they get there i'll already be waiting for them like it's this really cool like heightened sense like a wolf right hungry like the wolf pisces so the next card that come up came up was really interesting for me because the sweat lodge came out and i got a little nervous and i was like not again <laughs> it's like pisces already came out of this hole but here's the thing i want to show you i think that this is indicative of the spiral that you've are that you've always gone through right you bootstrapped you picked yourself up okay you go on your way and then you get kind of sucked back down this would be like the older version of you moving into this sweat lodge i actually think that this is like a different portion of the collective or other people moving into the sweat lodge i think that you're this hawk if you look at this pachamama card you're big you're actually so large that you're hanging flying over the trees this air knowledge what are you doing you're flying over the treetops in this joy you're over the treetops. And so again, it seems almost obvious, like, of course, I'm going to go into another sweat lodge. Of course, I'm going to go into another dark night. I'm going to go back into the underground shadow. No, you're not because you figured it out. Now I don't have to go through. And there's something about like the light that comes out of the sweat lodge. Like it's so tempting. It's like, go into the light. That's where it is. Right. But it's not, there's something about the illusion of that. And you're noticing it because your senses are so heightened. So you're actually going around it. You're flying over the sweat lodge. And instead, you're flying right into the cornfield. We're about to hit Virgo season, which is harvest season. And corn talks a lot about fertility and abundance with water as well coming out next to it, your element. And so it feels like, <clears throat> again, I know where the right place is. 
it's time for me to go there. I'll go there right now. It's like, you know where it is. And as you're traveling there, you notice the common detour or the common spiral that you used to, because you were going by foot before, right? Now you're traveling by air. You have that bird's eye perspective because you also have this higher perspective and gnosis of your ancestors. So you're able to notice it, not go into the sweat lodge again, fly right over it and fly directly where the resources are. Where the abundance, where opportunity, where um, resources, sustenance, water, life. Water is life force energy, right? You get to fly right over this and instead go right to where the honey pot is. And then you have spirit guardian of the summer, expansion. And so, like I said, this is a place where things are already happening. The soil is already good. You don't have to go underground. You don't have to weep into it. It's like it's already there for you. It's already blooming, which is really, really beautiful here. I also love this card because it has a gold finch, and that's the state bird of New Jersey. But that's just a personal thing that I like about that card. Um, <clears throat> and I like that it seems like there are these apples. Sometimes it's hard to tell if they're apples or peaches. But they look like apples to me today, which always gives me the idea of kind of like the tree of knowledge, right? It's like you're being given sort of like the fruits of the spirit, which is heightened instinct and intuition and heightened knowledge, gnosis, right, about yourself. And then we're ending your reading here with the wild woman and the staff, which I really, really like and brings through a lot of this Pachamama energy right here. It's that when you fly over this sweat lodge right to this kind of honey pot, this place where things are actually growing and happening above ground, right? It's like you are so tapped into the energy of the environment around you, of your body, of your ancestors, like all of it, that if like the wind shifts in just the slightest of ways, it's like you know exactly what's happening. You know exactly what it means with this staff coming up next. And this staff today, it feels like, planting your flag in the ground. It's like you get here, the wind shifts and goes, Pisces, it's time, put your flag down. So like you really assert like ownership over this new place or space in your life. And then the last card you have is the B, prosperity, right? And so it's like, now you become the steward of this place. You cannot be taken from it. People can't knock you out of it. People can't convince you to go back into the darkness. It's like your roots are here. It's like this house. Now your roots are in this place because you were there at the right time. So it's really, I love this reading. I think it's really beautiful. I love that we're breaking cycles. I love that we're working with our ancestors. I love that you're learning to find surety in the light. I love that you're doing things differently and avoiding common pitfalls that you've fallen in before. I think all of this stuff is beautiful and amazing, but I think the fact that you're noticing that, again, I don't have to go into the sweat lodge. I can just fly over it and go right to the cornfield. Like, it's so simple. It makes so much sense, right? But sometimes it's the simplest things that are the hardest for us to kind of pick up on, right? Um, so I really love this reading. Thank you for letting me read it for you, Pisces. I am going to go do um, an extended reading. So if you're interested in your extended reading to see how else this is playing out, or your monthly reading for August, I almost said March, your monthly reading for August, um, those are going to be the top two links in the description box. If you're interested in a personal reading, the decks I use on the channel, any of my other social media, etc., all those links will be down below for you. I love you so much, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.